The year is 102 BC, and here at the field of Aquae Sexte, the Romans stand against their oncoming doom. The Ambrons and the Teutons, after defeating the Romans three times in battle, now face them for a fourth time. But this is a new Roman army. A man called Gaius Marius has reformed the Roman army into regulated, paid, professional legions. What's up guys and welcome back. We're here with another DEI battle for you today and I pause this battle to start with because as you can see the uh, Germans are very much on top of the Romans and this one starts pretty damn quickly. So yes, this is the Battle of Aquae Sexte. It's fought in 102 BC uh, after the Romans had multiple armies defeated and annihilated um, they decided that they needed to reform the Roman army and they looked to Gaius Marius, one of the um, obviously, most famous generals, probably in the, like in Roman history, obviously known for the Marian reforms, which uh, is how we kind of know the Roman army today. So you have the legionaries um, that come into place to replace the old sort of Republican style armies. I mean, obviously they're still part of the Republic, but you know, like the old like sort of like a style of armies that like the Principes and the Chiarii and the Histadi, they are replaced with the uh, legion legions, and then you have the auxiliaries, which I mean, I think they still already had, but um, yeah, you have auxiliaries and legions, and that is it. Uh, and yeah, it's, this is a big, big battle in the history of Rome. Arguably, if they lost this battle, you'd never know. The uh, Germans may have marched on into Italy and um, settled there themselves and made themselves a threat to Rome. Um, but yeah, this is a huge threat at the time for Rome. It's over a hundred thousand troops. It's, they're not quite sure exactly, but somewhere between a hundred and two hundred thousand people were on the move. Uh, a lot of those warriors as well. Um, so yeah, and they, they were threatening to invade Rome. There's about thirty to 40,000 Romans at this battle. Um, so yeah, they're massively like outnumbered, about three to one, uh, if it's like good odds uh, in their favor. But yeah, it should be exciting to see uh, how this one goes down. Will history be uh, recreated? Will Rome be able to defeat the Germans? Or will the Germans um, defeat the Romans here today and then invade Italy? We'll see. But yes, if you're enjoying all things DEI and want to see more, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a cop to show your support, guys. It really does help out the channel. But yeah, I will press play and we'll get on with this shenanigans. But yeah, uh, the only other little bit I would say that uh, is worth mentioning is we have the uh, the Lugi going in first, and then we have the Kimbros as reserve here. So they're supposed to represent like the Ambrons and the uh, Teuton. So. I mean, you can make it which one, ever one you want. So you could say that, like, these guys in the front are the Ambrons and the guys behind are the Teutons, for instance. Or vice versa. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, they had to wait about five minutes, did the uh, Teutons, before they could attack. What's we'll the call the Kimbri, uh, the, uh, the Teutons. So, yeah, they have to wait five minutes. And then they can come in and attack and join the attack on the Romans. Because in history this battle is kind of almost a battle of, uh, of two phases they fight uh, Gaius Marius managed to divide the Kimbri and the Ambrons uh, sorry the Ambrons and the Teutons up and defeat them in sort of like in peace uh, while uh, while they're divided so yeah so uh, that's kind of what we're trying to represent here by having letting the uh, the Lugi or the Ambrons go in first as you can see here already clashing with the Romans down here so we're letting the uh, the Lugi go first, you know, maybe weakening the Romans just to allow the uh, the uh, Kimbri or the Teutons to come in and uh, finish them off. I'm just going to call them by their faction names here today, but yeah, they basically represent the Ambrons and the Teutons. So we've got the uh, Lugi here attacking, uh, trying to flank on around. Uh, and at the same time, once the Kimbri attack, this reinforcing a Roman army can also come into play. So it's just setting up for now by the looks of it. But yeah, this was uh, another thing that was also historically accurate, is that uh, Marius Mar sent 3,000 troops, uh, it didn't really say whether cavalry or infantry, just 3,000 troops around the flank uh, to try and surprise the, the Germans and uh, outflank them and cause a bit of chaos in the back lines, and it does work. Uh, I can't remember the name of the officer he sends to do it, but he just sends uh, uh, one of his legates to go and uh, basically do that duty. So that is supposed to represent that force over there. So the Romans do have reinforcements on the way as well uh, to come and support. But yes, they will be hitting the flank. Uh, the Kimbri have to pretend that they obviously can't see um, the Romans, but they very much can at the moment. Uh, so yeah, so that is basically all of the ins and outs of that. So we'll get back to the battle, which as you can see, the Romans aren't really uh, having any issues. They are murdering these light melee infantry. The heavy, heavily armoured legionaries 
this new Marian army are carving through the ill-disciplined Germans. As you kind of expect at this point in time. The Romans have kind of pushed out a little bit here, though. We've got some cohorts of Talica and Legionari here that have maybe overstepped their mark. There's a bit of a gap just forming in the Roman line here. Where is uh, Antik San uh, Arn Arnani? The javelinmen here. Whether these javelinmen are going to fill that gap, they actually kind of act quite nicely as a uh, as a hybrid unit. That you can see they've got their shield and spear out ready to go. It's a quite a nice hybrid unit as well that's being added in. Archers here really focusing down this legatus. Cavalry in DI is really important, and the Germans have none of it. Uh, it wasn't really stated that they had much, if any. So we went with no cavalry for the Germans in this scenario. And you can see here the legionaries chasing back these little very light infantry, just sending them packing. They can't face the legionaries head on. They're going to have to try and use a mass of the uh, Germans to outflank them. And they do have mass, uh, that is for sure. I mean, most of these units are 300 man. The Romans are best at 200. Apart from, uh, if they have it somewhere, yeah, here it is, the Cohorts Prima, a 400 man unit with the Sacred Eagle being defended here by its standard bearer. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. That unit can hold the line and a lot of the line if needed. Well, Cohors Ligurum in here. So yeah, a lot of Ligurian auxiliaries were at this battle as well. So again, trying to keep that historical sort of accuracy of what troops were there. But the Ligurians actually apparently were quite warlike. And because it was their territories that were most at threat from invasion, they were uh, very aggressive, very uh, proactive in their attack. They actually broke formation and attacked the Germans, which uh, forced the, uh, the legions to sort of follow up and support them. Yeah, they're holding the line pretty well. They're doing very, very well. I mean, you're going to expect some massive kills here for the uh, the Romans. This uh, legionary cab, though, here is kind of a bit, a bit of trouble. I think he's got stuck on a couple of infantry it's getting focused down quite a bit here this legion cab yeah needs to get out of there 50 to 70 morale oh and the troops are starting to drop quite a bit yeah there you go you can see the, the legions at this moment in time having no issues they're absolutely carving through these uh, these germans a lot of them are starting to waver you can see the idea that the uh, lugi play is going for he's trying to flank around with the uh, extra numbers he has because uh, most of these uh, roman armies are not full strength they are like, uh, I mean, this uh, this Roman player has, uh, I think, two armies, basically. They have like two, uh, a large army worth of troops, while the uh, other one is a lot smaller. Uh, so uh, the numbers are definitely not on the Roman side, but discipline and quality certainly is. And you might be able to see the Cimbri are on the move now. So that also means that other Roman army is on the move as well. They are moving as quickly as possible to come to the aid of, uh, of Gaius Marius. So I guess is maybe this guy back here, this Legatus Legionus here, this is Marius, I guess you'd say. We've got reinforcements for the Romans, I guess, coming from here. I think these reserves kept back here. They were worried about flanks, but yeah, we've got some veteran legionaries now coming in. So yeah, they are going to be very much needed on these front lines. Because uh, some of the Roman units are starting to get depleted. 88 out of 200, that's a small unit there. The center's still looking very good for the Romans. Uh, like veterans here and uh, some of the Jabberman really bulking up that line. And the Cohorts Prima is in action now as well. I'm expecting that to get a few hundred kills. The Romans over here definitely are maybe getting a little bit too ahead of themselves. Kind of breaking formation. These veterans, you'd hope they know what they're doing. But we'll see. I don't really know how you can have many veterans, I guess, of uh, like this, this era since this is the very first battle where Marian legionaries are used. But, you know, maybe they're veterans from the old Roman army that have been converted. Into the, uh, into the new Marian one. So yeah, the, the big difference is obviously like the Marian army kind of goes from being, uh, the Roman army goes from being like a, a temporary sort of like uh, troops are raised up to fight uh, to becoming a permanent standing army, you know, paid uh, by uh, its general basically in the state. Yeah, there's that. Reinforcements are starting to arrive to get the Kimbri here are starting to go in. Light spears. Again, nothing like too exciting. There are a couple of nasty units in the back for the Kimbri. They've got these uh, wolf axe axe mods. Axe mods? Uh, they're basically berserkers to a, a, or like something similar to them. They're really uh, like good shock infantry and they are nasty, nasty units. 
and uh, they are the basically the backbone of this Kimberley army. Everything else, there's some like medium stuff here, which is a bit better, better than what the Lugi have. But yeah, nothing too insane. It's a lot of mass. There's a heavy melee infantry general. He's probably gonna have a lot of joy against the veteran leader. He's here. Looks like, yeah, look at that. With a flank sort of going on there, these uh, Roman legionaries are starting to waver. And that's kind of how you have to defeat units in Rome uh, 2 DEI, is you have to flank them. You have to flank them. You don't really kill units in DEI, because the units are so big, it takes ages. Morale is the key in DEI for winning battles. Surround units, break their morale, and then just uh, like roll down the line. That's kind of like, I feel like how the how you need to play the game. It's a very light infantry going in here, trying to do exactly that, trying to flank these le uh, veteran legionaries. I mean, if you haven't checked out the DI um, mod, I'll leave a link for it in the description, but it is like one of the most known uh, mods for Rome 2. So if you've managed to avoid it somehow, I'm impressed. You can see here, this is not looking so good for the Romans now here in the uh, sort of like, I guess, right of center, or maybe it's their dead center, actually. Yeah, the center is crumbling here. Veteran legionaries, and uh, we've got some archers here breaking that have been sent into the front lines by the looks of it. They are breaking. The Roman reinforcements are on the way, though. They are nearly here. Uh, that will draw like some of the reserves of the Germans back. Uh, but yeah, the Romans' like, center is certainly crumbling here. We're going to have to see some of these troops here, these veteran legionaries. They're going to have to get sent in. I think they wanted to really send them in against the right here because um, the left flank of the German army here, the, where the Lugi are positioned, is still looking very stacked. I mean, it's just lights, but, you know, it could still be a problem. But, yeah, the center breaking is now causing these veterans to be sent here to try and stabilize the situation. And that is going to allow the Lugi to send in their reserves. And again, on the flank here, you can see uh, medium infantry and also some light infantry here managed to flank around these Italian spears, these auxiliaries, not as good as their legionary counterparts they are going to have a, a fight on their hand in a moment as these germans will try and uh, outflank them and really this army needs to get over here and save the day because rome is looking otherwise like it could be in a bit of trouble the pillum going off those famous javelins trying to weaken these uh these wolf, wolf axmos here it lo certainly looks like on this flank here the lugi still have a lot of troops very healthy but they're all a lot of them are lights they could break at any moment Certainly less, less trained than those uh, Romans. You can see just one little flank from a tiny, vet, uh, a tiny legion unit here, breaking a much larger spear unit. And that's what they need to just keep doing. Cohort Prima here, it's still fighting on the front lines as the, we'll see the legion, the uh, like the legion standard fighting here. We've also got cavalry now getting into the mix here. So the uh, the two uh, Lexus legionists here fighting side by side. Very cool to see. And here we go. Rome is about to go in, I think. We've got another, another cohort Prima here. Another 400 man unit. We're going to have to get that into action soon. It looks like it's going up against uh, the general here. He's already taking some casualties. He's throwing his axes. I like that. That's very cool. He's having javelins thrown back in him. But yeah, these uh, I mean, 50 men died there in the uh, javelin onslaught. I think we're now about to see the Kimbri sending in their elites against the Romans here. There you go, a clash of arms. And a clash of cultures. The barbarian faces. Civilized Roman world. That's a bit harsh to say. The barbarian civilizes their own sort of way. Yeah, the Romans are in danger of uh, flanking around here. Doing a lot of damage to these uh, Lugi troops here. Yeah, if they can just flank around, they can do a lot of damage there. Uh, and they've got two units. I mean, they've got legionaries and cohorts, primus attacking this general. Not a bad idea because, I mean, if it killed the general, it could um, pulls a master out, but really the Cohorts Primus should deal with this unit alone. Allow this legionary to pull out and flank around. Weapons ready. Just kind of keep an eye on what's going on. You can see the front line for the Romans is pretty much shattered. It's very much a, uh, a scattered fight now between individual units. It's not really a battle line. This serves better for the Germans who can get in behind flank units. Cause a bit more of a morale issue. The Romans stay in a solid line. They've obviously can uh, pretty much stop anything. The, the Italian volunteers, well, you know, trying to prove that they're uh, a match for the enemy. They are routed. 54, though, not bad. Held on for a while. So we're here. Veteran leader is fighting one of the uh, the Lugi generals.
I'd have thought that the general might be able to win that one. Heavy against, I mean, they're both heavy though. It's a healthy veteran legionary. Yeah, it looks like this Lugi player here, having sort of dealt with some of the Ro uh, some of the Roman right, is now sending troops to reinforce and, in fact, outflank the Roman reinforcements as well. We've got a unit over here of legionaries that's arriving a little late to the game. I don't know if this was forgotten about, whether it routed. I surely didn't route a 200 men. I think it's been forgotten about. So that's now arriving in column formation. They need to get over here and save the day, really, because uh, yeah, the Romans are getting outflanked. You can see steady. Uh, but 50 to 70 morale, that would be high if they weren't being outflanked, I have a feeling. And you can see here, look at this, the Romans they managed to route one of the uh, wolf warriors here in the uh, center. But the uh, sort of like the back line of the Germans is actually open as well. And that general could just smash on through if you want to see this. Archers here could go for and various other weak units. And some of the uh, Germans here, they need to move in. They need to get into action. In go more Germans here, side charging the Romans. And there comes the uh, general. He's like, for Rome, for Marius. Roma Invicta. There you go. I mean, they are winning decisively, crushing those uh, missile infantry under their hooves. Some of the legionaries, though, that have arrived late to the game, you know, as a reinforcement, they are breaking, though. I mean, they're pretty battered. They are breaking, that's uh, the main thing. And you can see, I think it's because they're getting outflanked. These guys are just not happy being flanked. We're just in the foliage so we can see what's going on. You see the cohorts premier's form square. Well, that is obviously a very good bonus for the uh, Romans that they can do this, but it doesn't really actually apparently deal with the uh, sort of like the outflanking debuff. Even though you are like not being outflanked, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just really is a good way to stop cavalry charges, which I guess in their own way are an outflanking. But yeah, they basically nullify cavalry charges, which is what I guess Rome needs to obviously worry about the most. As they're not really a cavalry nation. These Romans here, I feel like. Are they in square? Are they not? I don't really know what they're doing. They're just standing there. I think a general might have died. Don't know, but this uh, Coral Supreme here, wavering at 260 men. It's not even like lost half its troops, but it's surrounded. And that is going to be what's the big difference there. And I think it's this arm, the reinforcing army here that's lost its general being focused down. Marius is still alive. I think he's up here. Yeah, he's uh, hiding in the woods. He's, uh, you know, Rethinking his strategy, whether his uh, Marian reforms actually were worth it. Uh, I mean, in history they were, but at this battle it's not looking good, that's for sure. Cobalt's Prima here, though. All on the line. Old men! If you surrender, you'll be sacrificed to their gods. Your heart will be ripped out while you're still alive. Yeah, it looks like, uh, yeah, and they're losing now. Steady. Morale's not looking great. They surround this unit here. There's like three units of legionaries. I don't know if they're really engaged with these special legionaries. They're surrounding this general here. They could do taking him out. I think they're about to mass right anyway. I think we're about to see army losses. They technically are going to get, get surrounded themselves here, the veteran legionaries. Yeah, 0 to 10% morale, that's never good. Yeah, these guys are about to go. Yeah, they just got touched by the Germans, and that was all it took, and they're going to master out. The Coral Supreme is also gone. Marius has gone in for one last hurrah here, charging into Spearman. Uh, I mean, for Cavalry, that's never going to be healthy. You see here the uh, Legatus Legionus. Marius here is going to try, I guess, get one more charge off, maybe. Uh, but there you go, I think he's going to master out instead. Marius at least might get out alive, you know, get back to Rome, report him. What has happened here? But there you go. The Battle of Aquae Sex Day is going to be a German victory here today. A close victory. So history has been changed. Uh, and the Romans have been defeated instead of uh, them pushing the Teutons and the Ambrons back and saving Rome, really. But uh, Rome might now be in danger instead. But yeah, this was a battle that we did on uh, my Discord. Uh, so yeah, if you want to get involved in any of these sort of like scenarios, feel free to join my Discord. The link's down below in the description. Um, and you, or if you've got any DI battles, feel free to send them in. I'm always happy to check out some DI battles, like custom ones. Uh, always want to try and cover a bit more of this mod. But yeah, we got 
Myself playing as the Kimbros. My general got 128 kills here. Not too bad. I mean, he nearly died, though. He's definitely getting overwhelmed by that cohort's Prima. My uh, like, slightly better medium infantry here got 177 kills, 195. The spears, which are pretty much you know cheap rubbish, getting 116, 118. Uh, and then we've got uh, my wolf warriors on here. One got 334 kills. But it was not so great. I wonder whether they needed to flank more with than just standing their ground was not really their like sort of aim, I don't think. Then we have uh, Bane playing as uh, the Lugie here. 202 kills with his generals. Very good. Uh, he's got some like javelin on here getting 100 kills. I think these ja javies. Uh, then we've got some of his, uh, I think these are night warriors or something they're called. 118 kills. Not too bad. And then some of his, uh, I think these are just some like light axes, some light infantry over here, 109 kills. Then his he like heavier infantry here, getting 96 kills. And then we have uh, Johnny playing as the final uh, Lugi army, 199 kills with his archers is very good uh, because bows are not that strong in DEI, and you get like flanking shots at if you're gonna do any sort of damage. Uh, one of his uh, like swords, I think these are swords, you know, uh, getting 142 kills. Uh, and then we've got like 125 kills or more down here. Uh, his spears getting 124, 168. And then, yeah, his more like elite infantry getting 144 kills. Then we have Cyrus playing as uh, the reinforcing Roman army. 191 kills with his general is pretty solid. Uh, setting him into straight into the action. Uh, the cohorts Prima, 171 kills. The uh, legionaries, 140, 157 kills and still healthy before they routed. Then we have uh, Bad Omens here playing as the other Roman army, who is the one standing his ground with Marius. 139 kills with him. The other general getting 149 kills. Uh, his Javi's getting 100, 218 kills. Ligurians, 168. Cohort Prima getting 383 kills. The uh, Legionaries getting 174, 189, 258 kills with the Veterans here. 363 with another one here. Wow. The uh, Scorpio got 363 kills as well. Uh, this is very, very good. And more legionaries down here getting 233, 284. Yeah, some solid kills with all these legionaries. They all did well. He got over 5,000 kills, which is incredible, to be fair. But, I mean, he did have 5,000 Romans as well, so... You'd expect good kills. But there you go, guys. That is today's historical battle. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. And do go and check out some of these other DI battles I've done. There's some awesome ones on here that you should definitely give it a look and see where the history's changed once again. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.